Should be good though, it's highly recommended. Hi. All right, hi everybody. I'm Zen Honeycutt of Moms Across America and I'm here with Dr. Eric Wasker. Hi, Dr. Eric. Hey Zen, great to be with you and everybody. Thank you so much for the opportunity to say hello to everyone and give them some good info. Yes, we are here today to talk about how we can stay healthy. And Dr. Eric Plasker is a chiropractor that's been in practice for 35 years. And you've been training other chiropractors internationally for 20 years. And you've been an international author. You're a husband of 32 years and you're a father of how many children? Three children, grown-ups now. Gro three grown-up children. Three grown-ups, they got big. Very how does that good. happen? It happens so fast, right? So we are here today to talk about something that is foremost on so many people's minds right now. It is a literally crazy time right now, not just as far as health and politics, but mental health is being affected. Uh, we are cooped up, you know, things are, seems like they're crashing all around us and people really need help right now on focusing on how to be healthy. And if, if this is for me too. I'm so happy to be in this interview with you because I have questions for you that I am really concerned about. This is just a discussion, folks. This is not uh, advice from a doctor, okay? This is just Dr. Eric and I having a conversation. You may agree with some of the things we talk about. You may not. Either way, this is just a conversation. It's not medical advice, right, Dr. Blasker? Well, if I was a fly on the wall, I would want to be a fly in this conversation. I could tell you that right now. And if I was a parent as a fly on the wall, I would want to be a parent sitting in on this conversation. So, yes. And I, and I would want to share this with my other friends and family as well. So if you could, if you're watching right now and you want to share it, please do um, share this with other people, because this is a way for people to get important information from a valid source. You know, a doctor who's been in practice for 35 years. How many patients do you think you've seen during that time? Uh, let's say a lot, um, okay. thousands and thousands and thousands and, and really duplicating the hundred year lifestyle consciousness model through offices around the country and around the world. It's, it's probably in the millions. And what is the most fun though, is seeing people change. And, you know, you said something that was really important. You said it is a challenging time. It's a stressful time. So let's start with some really good news. You want to? Yes, let's start with that. Yes. Right. And, and, and also, please do touch upon what is the 100 year lifestyle because you just mentioned that people are going to want to know. But okay. yes, well, let's, let's, let's start with some good news. All right. So here's the good news. You ready? So you just survived the pandemic. Congratulations. Give yourselves a round of applause. You are much more adaptive than you ever thought you could be or would be. Your innate intelligence, your body's innate wisdom has adapted to the craziness of the world. Now, the real question is will you survive the reaction to the pandemic? That is, that is a whole nother story. But if you understand that your body is stronger today than it was a month ago, a month the stronger than it was three months ago because of your body's ability to adapt, then you have a lot to be excited about. Uh, and hopefully the knowledge that you get from this and doing some homework and maybe some of the places that we send you to, it will equip you to really function well in the world. And hundred year old people have lived through multiple pandemics, multiple epidemics, multiple stock market crashes, and they're still here. So we know that, and the 100 Year Lifestyle is about not just living to 100, it's about the journey, it's about quality of life every single day. It's about living at 100% for 100 years, which is a part of, like you said, right at the beginning, Zen, is keeping yourself healthy. Yes, absolutely. So that, there's a lot of good news. You're here, you're watching with this, you're, you're on your way to actually even being healthier right? Just, just by being here with us today. Absolutely. And we will get to the challenges too, I'm sure. Yes. Yes. But but tell, us, run... tell us a little bit more. How did you come up with the name hundred year lifestyle? It sounds like to, to put the goal to live to a hundred, right? Well, here's what happened with me is early on in my practice, I had a family performance-based practice. I had saw lots of babies, lots of kids coming in immediately after being bored, like, like, like lots of my chiropractic colleagues and like all of our 100 year lifestyle affiliated chiropractors around the country. And I saw people of all ages, shapes and sizes, and they would heal not just from back aches and neck pain, but kids with ear infections and autistic children and just all kinds of results. And it was super duper exciting. So it ended up becoming a very generational practice. Mm -hmm. So we had newborn babies and kids and families, whole families, and then generations like grandma, grandpa, mom and dad and their kids. And then we get great grandmas and great grandpas. 
and we saw results all across the board. And then one day, a hundred year old man walked into my office. Actually, he walked into the office at 98 and changed my life forever. His full story is on our YouTube channel, the hundred years style YouTube channel. I think it may be on our Facebook page too, but he asked me if I could help him. And quite honestly, I had no idea. I was very young getting into practice and I said, you know what, Max, honestly, I have no idea, but as long as you're alive and breathing and there's life flowing over your body, your nervous system, let's give it a shot. So I started to work with him and this man that came in crippled, broken alone within three months is walking all over the place. He got his life back. His energy was high. He was smiling. The pain lines left his forehead and, you know, we fell in love with this guy. And what I realized after three months of taking care of him that this poor soul had come into our office at 98 years old, crippled, broke, and alone. Mm -hmm. He had no idea he was going to live this long. So he had no idea how to take care of himself to ensure quality of life. So he had been deteriorating for decades. Right. Because most people don't have a, a plan for after they stop working. They well, don't have a plan for long-term care. They don't expect to maybe live that long, right? They don't think about it. Yeah, and so we are the first generation in history, actually, that's getting the advance notice that whether we like it or not, want to or not, we will probably live longer than we ever thought. And so I'm going to run through Max, and then we'll circle back to what you just said, because I think it's really important about not planning for it. Mm -hmm. um, so Max, he came in for a year, did amazing. We loved him. Uh, we took care of him. We fed him because he had nobody. He was always by himself, and we adopted him. And so he would always shake my hand with his crippled arthritic hand and say, thank you, Dr. Plasker, thank you. We'd hug and he would leave. Well, one day he misses an appointment. After a year of care, misses an appointment. We couldn't find him anywhere, try to locate him at his house, no answer. So 99 years old, what do you think we're thinking? Yeah, he passed away. He passed away, right? So yeah. we say a little prayer for Max, um, said goodbye and go about our business. Well, another year goes by. Now, Max is over 100 years old. And all right, everybody, here's your first quiz. Guess who comes walking into my door one day without an appointment? I promise you'll get it right. Max. Yeah. Max, right? So Max comes in. I'm in the back adjusting uh, the baby's kids and families and athletes. And, uh, and I hear my assistant at the front. She screams out like she's literally like she's seeing a ghost. Oh my God, Max. Oh my God. And so I'm in the back. I hear his name. He's the only Max I know. So I like adjusting on super high speed adjustment mode, clear out the rooms, walk around to the front and there's Max. Mm -hmm. And sadly, he literally looked exhausted. He looked like a man who was ready to go, this beautiful soul who was doing so well, who disappeared, stopped taking, we have no idea where he went. And he looks up at me and I looked down at him and I gave him a big hug and I said, Max, where have you been? We missed you so much. And he looked up at me and he had a tear coming down his cheek. His eyes were hollow. He grabbed my hand. He said, thank you, Dr. Plasker. Thank you. And died. What? Literally right there in the reception room. Oh my gosh. We, I screamed out to my assistant, call 911, call 911. Mm -hmm. Literally when he leaned over and fell into my arms forward, Zen, he's, his body was already hard. Literally rigor mortis had already set in. His spirit was gone. I tried to revive him, not a chance. I scooped him up, carried his stiff, hard body back into uh, one of the back rooms, the ambulance came, took him away, never to be heard from again. And it broke our heart. And I couldn't get it out of my head. I mean, because that had never happened to me before. I mean, we are all about life and energy and getting younger every day and people healing from incurable things and watching the miracles of the body heal itself all the time and performance constantly in our practices. And so you know, this was a big shock on my soul, my spirit, my heart. Yes. And I got to thinking about it. You know, I wonder how many hundred year old people could there possibly be? 
And so I started to do the research and I'm thinking, you know, is Max an isolated case? Is he a freak of nature? And then uh, that's when I realized that 100 year old people are the world's fastest growing group percentage wise. Mm -hmm. And so he was not an anomaly. People are living longer than ever. In fact, and we'll get circling back to your point. He had no master plan. He at 100 years old and people that are 100 years old today, like we just posted on our Facebook page, Erica was telling me we just posted something or maybe it's going to post this afternoon about a 102 year old woman that just she had the Spanish flu when she was younger. It helped build her immunity and she just healed from COVID. And so she had there was an article about her in the paper. And so 100 year old people, when they were born, let's say back in 1920, their life expectancy was literally only 50, 55 years. So this is a generation that is outliving their scientifically predicted life expectancy by a whopping five decades, by longer than science could ever have imagined. Mm -hmm. Now, the challenge that we have circling back to the challenges and to the times that we're living in today is that while other countries are continuing to see life expectancy and quality of life expectancy go up. They are more holistic. They are not drug cultures like right. we are here in the United States. In the United States, we are seeing the first generation in history that is seeing the life expectancy begin to go down. And it's not because we've lost our human potential. It's not because our innate intelligence doesn't know how to adapt. It's because the lifestyles that we are living and the serious neurological damage that we have in so many of our children today, yeah. that we have this generation of seniors that is probably going to live to 100, many of them living longer than ever, but the younger generations are dying younger and sicker yeah. than ever They're because not of the choices that we have made. Yeah. And so it's important that we have this discussion. But, yeah. So I want to hang on one second because I don't want to step over something. That moment when Max came into your lobby into your office to thank you before he died. I, I want it. I want to just highlight that for a moment because he clearly did that for a reason. He wanted his last words to be thank you. And I believe that's because he knew he wouldn't have made it to a hundred without you. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting from that. And that is, that is gratitude at the deepest level. And I hope you let that sink in. And I hope you and other chiropractors around the country get that, that you are supporting people to live a lifestyle they normally would not be able to live. My family goes to a chiropractor. That's the first person we call when we're in pain. We do not take painkillers just to, you know, numb ourselves. The pain means something for a reason. You know, that the body being misshapen can be released, right? It, your chiropractic care can just, I mean, in my experience, you, you can tell us, what, but can free your body to flow, your energy and your blood and, and your nervous system and everything to flow and work the way it's supposed to. And I believe you gave that man a hundred years. And well, I don't know that I gave him a hundred years, but I certainly gave him the, the last two years were a lot than yeah, it would him. have been. Yeah. And, you know, what's interesting, and thank you for your words. I, I do yeah. take it in. I've been telling that story for a long time. It never gets old because I do feel like he is with me. I never asked for that. You know, yeah. I think what's, what is important for parents to understand and, you know, understand, yes, I am a chiropractor. I've been in practice for 35 years. I'm a husband of 32 years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a miracle. You know, thankfully, my <laughs> wife still loves me. We still love each other. We have a great relationship. I actually think it's stronger now than it's ever been. Uh, yeah. I have, we have an amazing relationship with our children. All three of my kids, 30, 28, and 26 now, they're all chiropractors practicing wow. chiropractors. All of them are chiropractors. Them. Yeah. Now, they're... is that something that you said you're going to be chiropractor someday and sort of prep them to do that? Or was that, that was a choice that they made along the way? You know, it's interesting. They, it, we, I never put it in their head that this is what they needed to do, or this is what they should do. We just live this lifestyle. We live this chiropractic hundred year lifestyle where uh, it was just, we made healthy eating a priority except for birthday cakes and things like that. And, yeah. you know, periodic sugary things that we have, but it wasn't as often as probably most of the world where we weren't junk food people. We ate healthy for the most part. We were movement and all of our kids were into some type of sports, whether it's tennis or soccer or dance. Uh, and we were active as a family. And, 
and it wasn't always easy. My oldest son had an injury that uh, initially paralyzed him when he was 10 months old. He had a fall. He fell off the bed and landed on his head. We were actually told mm -hmm. that he would never walk, talk, or use his arm. And no. we didn't believe what the doctor said. And this is such an important part of this conversation that we chose to believe what we wanted to believe as a family. We chose the lifestyle that we wanted to live. We did not buy into all of the allopathic doom and gloom and the fear, especially today, the fear mongering in the world. And I remember, and he was a baby, 10 months old. He was our oldest. And I was a kid. I was 27 years old. My wife was 29 years old. We didn't ask for that. And, but we stepped up to the plate. We handled it. We did what we needed to do. And I think what launched me into the speaking world in my industry and other industries about healing and lifestyle care and wellness and performance-based care is when I adjusted my son in the hospital and he woke up uh, and began to move. And then three days later, he was standing, something they said he would never do. And a week later, he was walking with a limp, but he was walking. And it's something that they said that he would never do. And then by the time he was 12 months, he was running yet with a limp. And now here he is because we took a performance-based consciousness. Uh, hey, you have this potential inside of you, this innate potential, this innate intelligence inside of you. And if you nurture it with your thoughts, with your activities, with your lifestyle, with keeping your nervous system functioning properly, there, there are really no limits we're finding to human potential. Wow. Amazing. And we really want to tap into that limitlessness right now of human potential because so many of us are faced with so many challenges. And so I want to talk about uh, one of the, the, the biggest current challenge, which is the current COVID situation. There is a uh, heavy scrutiny happening on the safety and uh, efficacy of vaccines. And uh, you made a decision a long time ago not to vaccinate your family. And, and I'd, I'd like to know why, why was that? And what was the outcome of that? Uh, great question. And, uh, you know, I'm learning a lot about that time when I was in school. So I went to school, uh, Life University, back then it was Life Chiropractic College in Marietta, Georgia. Now it's Life University. I'm still heavily involved with the school. I do a lot of speaking to prospective students. I volunteer there. I contribute to research there, things like that. And, uh, and I love it. I love my profession, 35 years in practice, more every single day. And when I was in school, it was 1982 to 1986. And I was supposed to graduate March of 1986. I ended up graduating December 1985, which was uh, a quarter early. And why is this a significant date? Because you and I talked about this, this film that just came out with everybody. Everybody needs to watch this film, 1986, uh, The Act. You yeah. have to watch it. Every parent needs to watch it. Be vocal about it. Have watch parties in your house. Share it with everybody. It is maybe the most important film at this time in history, in yes. my opinion. Yes, I, I absolutely agree. And and we, when I watched it, and I, I helped with fundraising for it, I helped gather people to go to the meetings to you know watch the trailer and to donate to it. And I'm very proud to have been a part of that because there, right now there is nothing that's more sort of hanging over our heads or being pushed on the media or being promoted as a solution than this COVID-19 vaccine that's coming. It's, going, it's supposed to be the savior of the world. And, yeah. you know, I'm curious what a person thinks that didn't choose to vaccinate their child through their life, that is a health professional, that has seen thousands of patients. You know, how do you feel about that? And, and when you didn't vaccinate your children, what, what was that outcome? Well, and what I started to say here leading up to okay. that film, yeah, all those scenes that you see pre-1986 of the protesting, of the seminars, the lectures by Barbara Lowe Fisher. Yes. I was probably at at least half a dozen of those. Oh, wow. So this was my schooling experience. I didn't go to chiropractic school to become an activist. I went to chiropractic school because I had a football injury when I was 15 years old. I went to the hospital. They, the doctor said, take these opioids, don't play for set for 30 days. I said, are you kidding me? Thankfully for me, thankfully yeah. what I heard was, Drugs equal don't play. That's what I heard. It's not what he said, but that's what I heard. Right. So I was like, now I'm not taking these. I want to play. 
I didn't even give it an option. And so I went, got adjusted, changed my life, played that afternoon without any pain, no drugs. And so I was like, that's why I went to chiropractic school. I learned about the performance aspects of chiropractic, not just the crisis care, but the lifestyle care, the performance-based care. And when I got to school, I'm starting to learn about this, the body's amazing innate healing capacity. If there's no interference, if there's no chemicals, and if you do the right things, if you nurture your innate intelligence, and then all of a sudden I start hearing about the vaccine reactions. In fact, I have right here a shot in the dark. This is, I went and dug up when you sent me that note about the film. I have all the books. I have, they're all over here on the floor. All, all the books all that are mentioned me. in the film, you have them all, yeah. I, I read them in 1983, 1984, wow. 1985. Those statistics that are talked about in this film. And when this law passed, I remember we fought like hell as we did the research because people like Barbara Lowe Fisher, what an amazing woman uh, that woman is. Uh, yes. Andy Wakefield, amazing, courageous person uh, taking this on. And so we became activists and I didn't know my wife at the time. Uh, I met her like six months into practice and we had the vaccination debate before we even got married because I said, you know what, listen, have you read about this? Do you understand this? And I said, listen, all you need to do, all I'm going to ask you to do is do the homework. And we went as a couple because I had already been on the journey, except I was the woman in the film and she was the man in the film. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, 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 not vaccination. And she was like, oh, I don't know. It seems like everybody's doing it. And so in the film, what I loved is, is they started a conversation and asked all the questions that parents go through. Well, what about smallpox? What about polio and what about all of that, which is all in these books and it's all covered in the film. So my wife, to her credit, she said, all right, I'll, that's fair. I'll do the research. I'm not going to listen to my friend who's doing it because somebody else said that they were going to do it. I'm not going to do it just because my doctor said that it should be done because my mom did it. I'm not going to do it because, you know, it's the socially supposedly moral thing to do. I'm going to do the homework by myself. And yeah. she did it. And I can't imagine that anybody that does the research would ever, ever, ever vaccinate their child, ever, yeah. ever. Yeah, and that's your that's your belief. It's not medical advice, it's your belief, but we, we ask and we challenge and we implore people to watch this movie, 1986, The Act, and you will see, just as this couple did, that they learned along the way. Do the research, do the research, look it up. You think yeah. the polio vaccine is great? Watch this movie. Take a look at what they learned in doing the research about the polio vaccine. If you think that the MMR vaccine is necessary or isn't linked to autism, watch this movie. Take a look. Follow the. They give you the names of the experts. That like they give you the names of the books. Like Dr. Eric Plasker said, they give you the name of the people at the CDC that were you know whistleblowing right and saying yes, the MMR vaccine is connected to autism, especially in in African American boys. Right. And there's lots of other information. I know the people that are watching right now heard what I just said before, but there is other information here about and particularly I'm just going to mention, I don't want to ruin it for you because I really want you to watch it, but particularly about the side effects of the vaccines that our government acknowledged were they would call them on the table. Right. And that people, the parents could get compensation for because they were acknowledged side effects of vaccines, you know, vaccine damage and how they took them off the table as time went by and allowed less and less and less of those symptoms to be compensated for, the parents to be compensated for those symptoms. That was outrageous to me, wasn't it, to you? Absolutely outrageous, how they took conditions that they knew were caused, caused by vaccines and they took them off the table for that people couldn't get compensated for them. They narrowed the field of what was available for compensation and what would be considered a compensatable reaction. I mean, these, these are really important things. And listen, I'm not saying don't get vaccinated. We did not do it. And right. given the choice, yeah. we would not do it again. And my wife made that choice. She comes from a very medical background, very medical oriented family. She said, you know what? No, this makes a lot of sense to me. I'm reading the science, I'm reading the research. This is not something that I'm gonna do. And so what is interesting in watching that film, it starts, it goes back and it tells the history, which I think is really important for people to know. I love what Andy says when he talks about it. People need to know the history if they know where we're going with this. And it takes it through 1986 and then up to the present day with what you're talking about with 
these vaccines that they're talking about, you know, that and when they eliminated what the act did just to, quickly is it eliminated liability by the drug companies. It gave them yes. basically a free pass to do whatever they wanted. They wouldn't have to hold themselves accountable. They don't hold themselves accountable. The studies that were supposed to be done by any NIH, I think it was every two years, were not done uh, yeah. and they could not be found. So there's been no follow up and there is no double blind placebo based study showing that vaccines are either effective or uh, that vaccines actually work. There's yeah, no I evidence. There's one study because I we did a Freedom of Information Act to the CDC or the FDA. I don't remember which one. There was one placebo saline blind study done by I think it was HPV. And, but the outcome was not good, right, for the patients. It showed that there was harm. So that's been pretty much buried. So you, you really, it's not, there's no placebo blind study with saline solution that is widely, you know, shown. There's only been one and that one, did, the outcome wasn't good. So right. that, that is a very important, when people say vaccines are highly tested and shown to be safe and effective, that's not true. Not with a saline placebo double blind study. They use other vaccines as the control group. And we all know that's just like Monsanto giving rats uh, lab chow with glyphosate in it and then subjecting them to glyphosate and saying, well, wait a second, both group groups grew tumors. And that's exactly what happened. And that's how their science was faulty, right? You cannot say that. And that to the point shows that there's no significant difference, right? To the rats that were exposed to glyphosate or or to the humans that were exposed to this particular vaccine if they can prove no significant difference then that means they can say that it's safe that's it's right. an interpretation that's actually scientifically inaccurate so just wanted to be clear about that right and when, and and to be clear for me what i said is that shows that it's effective which is basically what you're saying compared to a, a normal placebo that should be done and you yes. know what i think is really important because a lot of people have been reaching out there's a lot of people that are waking up to this. I know Dell talks about the army that he's building. This this group of people, and I I am vocal because I yeah. it really concerns me that we are being put in a position to possibly not have a choice. Yes. I mean, what I what I when I look back in 1986, my got married in 1987 and 19 uh, excuse me 1988. Jacob was born in 1989, and we had a choice. We had a choice, and to have be put in a situation to not have a choice to fast track vaccines with no real significant testing. It is very, very dangerous, the territory that we are headed in. And the, the thing that is important, and I don't, we don't need to spend all the time on this because we can yeah. never do justice yeah, yeah. to this the way the film does justice to it. Yes. I thought that it's an amazing film. What I think is important for parents to know, going back to a question that you asked me earlier, is so what are parents who don't vaccinate or even if they did vaccinate, what do they do? How do they raise healthy kids? You asked me, how did my kids turn out? Yeah, yeah. And so here's an interesting point. So my kids 30, 28 and 26 now, I don't know how many years, if you add all that up, maybe that's uh, 50, 86 years of children getting into grownups. Yes. And I'm gonna exaggerate the number here a little bit. We maybe made eight visits to the pediatrician combined, maybe, maybe. Wow. I'm trying to count them. I don't so even all think the three it's that kids. Much. All three kids. kids. Wow. I don't even think it's five. Right. I don't even think it's five. I, I said eight, maybe it was seven. Maybe that's the lucky number. I don't remember what the number is. Yeah. But here's what we figured. If, I mean, we understand the body as a chiropractor, I understood the body. And, and so if we were not gonna vaccinate, Mm -hmm. which we chose not to. We were making the choice to not do it. If we were not going to vaccinate and we had a tape measure and we had a scale and we used some common sense, much of it we learned in chiropractic school, which is why chiropractors are taking care of so many kids around the country, holistic doctors taking care of. So I know our 100 year lifestyle docs are take care of lots of kids and families and so many of them. And here's a great common sense resource for you. Um, it's called How to Raise a Healthy Child in Spite of Your Doctor. It was published in 1987. You could tell by the book, my wife and I, we've read it probably 20 times. They talk about fevers, ear infections, things like that. We didn't go to the doc. We didn't go to the pediatrician for that. I'm not telling you to. I'm telling you, you parents, do your homework. There are other ways. We would adjust our, check our kids. We would make sure their upper cervical spine was 
clear, balanced, good nerve supply, check the rest of the spine. We'd give them good nutrition. We would give them plenty of rest. We'd give them a warm bath uh, or a cool bath, depending on the circumstances. And we'd give it a little time. We'd give it a day. We didn't panic every time the temperature went up. We didn't panic every time there was a sniffle because we knew that these were signs of the immune system actually working. So yes. it's true that bacteria, viruses, they thrive best at a 98.6-ish type of temperature and that when the body is thrown out of balance in some way, shape, or form, it needs to be brought back into balance balance and maybe kill some of the germs that have gotten out of balance that needed to be brought back into balance, the body will raise its temperature. You know, you're not, they don't, it doesn't plug into a charging unit. The right. body raises its own temperature. It's the body's natural defense. When you have sniffles and you have, you know, all of a sudden irritants in your sinuses, for example, this is the natural defense system of your body. This is innate immunity. So when you turn it off, with an antihistamine or you bring the fever down because it's 100 degrees or 100.5 or 101 or whatever it is, and you rush to bring it down. With, ty with Tylenol. Right, which we know oh. has dangerous side effects. Do not do that, yeah. Yeah, and so what happens is for these kids, we alter their immune response. We slow down the healing. And you know, I think what a big part of what was way back in my generation with ear infections, when we were parents raising our kids, if you had any kind of sniffle of any kind of color, you were given an antibiotic. If you had any kind of earache or ear infection, or you were given an antibiotic, and they were so overprescribed. Here's an interesting thing that a lot of people don't realize the history of this. You know, probiotics never used to be available in health food stores. They, were not, they weren't a supplement that you could right. buy. Like and 20 years ago, right? Not, a, yeah. not wasn't available. Yeah, never saw well, it. Wasn't available. So why probiotics now all of a sudden? Why is it being so highly recommended? Oh, well, I have an idea. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, we, we know that they've been overprescribed. So we have created an environment of superbugs within our system. We take these people, take these antibiotics, any kind of sniffle, any kind of anything. Oh, it's just a precaution. No, the precaution most of the time is to let your body heal itself and do its job. Because when you take the antibiotics, you destroy the flora of your gut. Uh, it makes, it affects your immune system. Uh, you uh, become more vulnerable. You create an environment of superbugs within your own body, yes. which is why they come back stronger and stronger and stronger. And so what the natural health industry did is we said, okay, no, you have 70 trillion. I don't, I don't know who counts them, but trillions of bacteria in your body all the time, trillions of viruses in your body all the time. And so when you get out of balance with the bad bacteria because of antibiotics being used, we need probiotics, good bacteria to put back in because the antibiotics kill all of the bugs or not all of them, but as many as they could get their killer antibiotic selves on. And so yes. it destroys the flora within the body. And so probiotics became very popular because we needed to restore that balance within. Well, and I so have to add though, it's not just the antibiotics that were being over administered, right? To, to children for every little sniffle because it was the new thing. And there were advertisements, right? That said to, to, to go to your doctor and get this. Um, we, we need to point out that glyphosate weed killer has been sprayed in our food now for 20 years, predominantly 70% 70, 70 of it, that's like billions of pounds of it that has been used, has been used in the past 10 years. So an extraordinary amount of glyphosate herbicides have been used on our food crops and not just on the GMO crops that are engineered to withstand it, but the crops that they want to dry out that are most commonly used in our food, like wheat and peas and beans and legumes and sugar and rice and any type of grain that's used in beer, you know, all of the oat, oatmeal, you know, all of these. Now, in some cases, that's starting to decline because they're listening to the, mar the market, to the consumers, and they're hearing that we don't want glyphosate. But glyphosate was registered as an antibiotic. It has been proven to destroy the beneficial gut bacteria and to allow for the, for the proliferation of the pathogenic gut bacteria, which is what you're saying, which is, you know, leads to a virulent vi uh, bacteria like E. coli and salmonella, more increased UTIs, increased pain, you know, guts, stomach pain and all of that. And so we're not just getting antibiotics from our doctors, we're getting them from our food. Yeah, and and the, it's, in the chickens, it's in the chickens, it's in the beef, it's chickens, in the yeah. pork. It's, mm -hmm. it's literally ubiquitous. And 
So I think it's so important that people understand, and you made just made a great point, that the power is in the people. It really is. The power is in the people. The market is driving the changes that you just discussed. A lot of it thanks to people like you and the work that you're doing. We're so grateful to the and work. Our, you're and doing. our mom's watching right now. That are sharing this right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, listen, I, I built my practice my practices educating moms. We had a program called um, Raising Healthy Drug-Free Families. We did Mother's Morning Out programs, Mother's Night Out programs. And we got to the moms. We taught the moms. And, you know, because we knew what, what they were going through. And what I noticed in my practice, uh, which kind of freaked me out a little bit, is we saw these autistic kids that started coming in and these neurologically damaged children. And many of them would respond chiropractically. And we got excited about that. But what we started to notice later on in our practice, that there was a woman that came in, I'll never forget this. She came in with her husband. It was a, uh, a, a biracial couple, beautiful family. Uh, it was a, a, a black woman, a, a white man, beautiful couple. She had a this child that was autistic. They actually got married after this baby was born. It was really a great story about how they came together. And it was harmonious. I love that. Uh, and so what was interesting was, is that this kid who was now 16 years old, autistic kid, he was not a autistic baby anymore. And he was not an autistic toddler anymore. He was an, an autistic six foot four, 240 pound young man that was very uh, out of control. And uh, the adjustments we gave definitely calmed him down at times, but there was so much damage for so long. And the, the family, I don't know, I really, I wish I could tell you that this story had a happy ending. I don't know the end of this story yeah. uh, for this family, but I think what's important is, is that if you don't act now, like 1986, I had no idea that what we were fighting for pre-1986 before this act was passed was gonna have such implications today. I had no idea that that was going to happen. And what I think is really important, Zen, is we need to call out the pediatricians mm -hmm. because, you know, we sign a Hippocratic oath to do no harm. And any pediatrician that does not stand up and at least is not willing to have a conversation about this is a coward as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. And parents, we need to be willing to have these conversations. You know, back then, 1986, 1987, there were pediatricians that thought like you and I are talking right now. Our pediatrician, Jeffrey Agem, Abrams, he said, you know what? I don't blame you for not vaccinating. I'm not going to vaccinate either, but my patients are asking for it. I'm going to do this for the patients that demand it and want it. Dr. Mendelson, he was a big advocate. He helped support the National Vaccine Information Center, which Barbara Lowe Fisher runs today. So these pediatricians back then, pre-1986, there were many of them that think like you and I, mm -hmm. but over the last 20 years, medical school for pediatricians is basically funded by pharma. The, their protocols are vaccines. Their protocols are around organizing around these laws that are being passed that they want to be uh, mandated versus uh, optional with no evidence. And they're seeing the damage. And I think it's a problem. I really do think it's a problem because, you know, when you look at these, um, the pediatricians, they need to not just be pawns in this game. They need to speak up uh, and they need to be willing to look at both sides. Otherwise, they should be held liable just like the drug company should be held liable. Right. Because the information is out there now. And if a pediatrician continues to vaccinate, especially in the manner of, you know, six vaccines in one sitting for a six month old equaling 10 different diseases, right? In one sitting for a small baby, that many vaccines at one time with the toxins that we know are in there with the side effects that are written right on the manufacturer's label, you know, can cause SIDS, can cause, uh, you know, encephalitis, can all these things that the doctor's not telling the, the, the parent either. They're not telling them there is a risk. And, and, the, and the parent's the one that goes home and lives with the consequences of all of that. And we see them in our practices too. Because, I mean, if I see one more parent that comes in and says to me, Dr. Plasker, I did what the doctor told me to do. I thought I was doing the right thing. And, you know, listen, I'm, I, I, my baby had an injury, okay? I understand what it's like to hold a paralyzed child in my arms 
and sing to him and pray to him and pray to God, help, hoping that he would wake up and then seeing him respond and seeing his life change for the positive. I know what that feeling is like at two o'clock in the morning when there's nobody else around. It's you, your child and God. And that's it. Yes. And you hope somebody's listening. You hope somebody's listening. And you and but here's the thing. We're at a point now, Zen, where we really have to be proactive. We have to be proactive. We have to have the guts. Every parent needs to have the guts and the courage to get educated, which is another reason why this film I think is so valuable. It will completely educate you. Uh, Vaxxed, another great film. Uh, watching the stuff that you're putting out, the high wire. Uh, great. And, and not just you. I'm going to say I want every single person watching to send those links to your pediatrician, to your doctors, to demand that they watch it. Ask them. Say, I'm asking you to watch this, and the next time I come see you, I'd like to talk to you about it. I mean, this, we have to, you know, hold them to account. We need to share. I mean, I had my gynecologist. I started talking to her about vaccines and she's like oh i hadn't heard that or i hadn't heard this could you send me information you know she's actually open to it but they are so busy doing what they do they don't take the time to learn this type of information so we really do need to hold them to account and and which, which, i by I, the I, way yep. is another crime mm -hmm. in my opinion because they have to be willing to look at both sides they are they're in a position of authority over your children and mine they are not in a position to just be a puppet of an industry yes. that is that's not what they agree to right yeah. they agree to not in their oath yeah yeah they yeah. agree to do no harm and it is doing harm by administering something to a child knowing with with available information maybe they know or not but it's their responsibility to know what the options are and and what the side effects are and with this information available that these uh, vaccines in the current formulation at the current doses can cause harm that is causing harm by administering them without um without informing the parent and giving them a choice or even pressuring them saying your child could die if you don't do this i know i i have to share i had that moment with my child and as your wife uh lisa says your child you your child and the darkness and for me there was a god moment too right but there's also that darkness and that was i believe because i listened to my doctor and i'm almost fully vaccinated my child my especially my oldest one and he got autoimmune diseases uh you know all kinds of food allergies and um all kinds of health issues rashes and a febrile seizures and the day where all of a sudden one day he just break out in a red rash and have a high fever and we're like what is going on we have no idea the doctor said oh that just sometimes that just happens and this is after you know all of the vaccines we gave him and one night he was having, um, thing, it was Thanksgiving dinner and he was eating stuffing. He was like five years old and everything was fine except all of a sudden he looked very, very sick and I thought he got maybe a stomach flu or something. I sent him in the back room. He broke out and he called out a few minutes later. He broke out in a full body rash. Like his body blew up like a raspberry, right? Welts and red everywhere, especially groin area. And um, we had we had guessed that he had might have had some type of... Um, nut allergy before because he was, he was exposed to a dog and a nut at the same time, like a year before when he was a baby. So we had an EpiPen. We gave that to him. It wouldn't come out. I had to pull it out. Blood spur across the room. I mean, it was just, people were screaming. We just got in the car and run. we didn't think of calling that ambulance. We went to the hospital and, um, and he was in that bed with all the IV tubes hooked up to him and his eyes were bleeding to me. Like his eyes were saying, please help me. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing I could do but pray to God to yeah. save him. That was wow. it. And for years, I just avoided those foods. Those, you know, like every play date, every birthday party became like like walking into battle, right? Because is my kid going to pick up a cookie and eat it and die? It was a very stressful situation, and um, you know, stressful for others too. You know, my mother in law and my friends and you know things like that. And and what what I got was that 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 fear can paralyze us. And it can make us sick. So I'm not an, an I, I never classified myself as an anti-vaxxer. It was an ex-vaxxer, right? It was somebody, I, I did that. I listened to my doctor, my child and all my children got multiple allergies, multiple leaky gut issues, all kinds of things. And I think that's in conjunction with the glyphosate in the food supply, right? That does not help either because there are people who haven't vaccinated, who have kids with autism and they, you know, one of the reasons might be because they expose their kids to lots of glyphosate unknowingly. 
But I think in conjunction that our kids are being inundated with these toxins and then they turn to Western medical care and get more medications. They yeah. get more antibiotics, they get more steroids, which I have a whole nother story about, but that just doesn't work for the child system. So that's why I have you, we're talking today because I want people to know about care. I don't even want to say alternative care because to me, it's not alternative. It's essential care to go to a chiropractor, to talk to a nutritionist, to, to actually get care that that's catered for you. When I went to an iridologist and, and holistic doctor, naturopathic doctor, in addition to chiropractor, she said, we're going to do a patchwork quilt for you of certain supplements that your body is needing right now. Right. And that's not what a Western medical doctor say. They say, we're going to give you Zyrtec or Zantac or what, you know, whatever. And they would give the same allergy medication to me as they would give to a 600 pound African American man who's 80 years old, completely different genetics. Right. Yeah, and a me, lot, and a lot of those drugs were never sense. tested on children. They were never tested on children. Or, Which, or women, by the way. There's a book that shows that a lot of these medications have never been tested on women because women's estrus cycle in the, the rats, it messes up the results. So they only test these on men in most cases. Yeah. So let's give people a vision here then. Because yeah, okay. you know, we, the we, have done, we have done a lot of what you need to be wary of and be careful of. And please don't take it lightly. You can see the passion because of our experiences and what is yeah. absolutely sweeping the country, thankfully, this mindset. We are not alone anymore. Yeah. Anybody who gives even a little bit of a care mm -hmm. about truth mm -hmm. is watching films like this and having these conversations. And and I, I you asked me going back to this conversation about my kids, right? So now yeah. no pediatrician visits right? Minimal, six visits. They got adjusted, got checked chiropractically through every stage of growth and development, good nutrition, activity levels, not eating a lot of sugar, getting plenty of rest, uh, minimizing technology. I remember Mortal Kombat came out. It was like the, and the Power Rangers, and it was like the videos of the day. And, you know, my wife, man, she drew a line and she said, you know what? I'm going to be the jerk mom, I guess, because you can't watch this and you need to limit that time. And, you know, my kids got mad and they got over it and they still love us today. And, you know, when, and my oldest get married in a couple of months, we're really excited about that. They're healthy. And she came, his, his future wife came from a family that was not a chiropractic family, but they chose not to vaccinate. That family chose not to vaccinate. And so, you know, I guess you could say we're anti-vaxxers and, but most people are ex-vaxxers mm -hmm. out in the world. And so here's a thought that, is what people need to understand too about why pediatricians are prescribing. Think about this. If every family utilized pediatric medical care the way that our family did for a year, the entire pediatric industry would go bankrupt almost overnight. Right, right. Because there's nothing else to offer. And what is important to understand as a parent, and I'm not saying not go to the pediatrician. I'm not saying not follow protocols. Right, right. I'm saying you need to do your homework because you're going to live with the consequences of that decision. My kids, all the boogers in carpool going to school, my kids used to get mad at us because they would be like, how come Ruben's not going to school? We always have to go to school. So, so we would end up taking them on vacations uh, because, you know, we wanted to take them out of school to make them feel like they could get some time off. And, uh, and you know, the teachers got mad at us. And we'd say, listen, they're going to remember this educational trip that we're taking them on much more than they're going to remember what they're learning in your class this week. And yep. they do. Yep. And so if you understand that that's how it's packaged, then you trust the innate intelligence of the body. One of my favorite sayings in the 100-year lifestyle is that you have an innate intelligence, and that's a chiropractic principle, that you have an innate intelligence. It can be interfered with, and when that happens in the spine, it's a subluxation. When you remove the interference, the body heals itself. And so if you understand that, and then you understand that your body's innate intelligence will organize around the thoughts that you think, the choices that you make, and the lifestyle that you live, you realize that if you change your life the possibilities of you living healthy to 80, 90, 100 years and beyond are increasing exponentially every day. We have sewage, we have plumbing, we have food. The only thing that this generation does not have or has that the current generation of centenarians did not have is we have a incredibly accelerated vaccination schedule. 
yeah. on vaccines that have number one, not been tested for efficacy or safety, and they have certainly not been tested all given at the same time or in such a abundant 72 vaccines within the first few years of life. And so, you know, it's, this is the issue on the table right now. This is not necessarily what the 100 year lifestyle is all about. It's about living, expressing yourself, your full potential 100% for 100 years. That's really what it's about. Uh, but if you are neurologically damaged, it changes the game for you and you have choices that you can make to limit the possibilities of those injuries. And, you know, we're giving, I know you just showed something on the screen, we're giving it away. We are giving it away. You're, you're giving away the 100 Year Lifestyle Second Edition. So if you go right now, you go to 100yearlifestyle.com, uh, we're giving you two giveaways, freebies. One is the complete 100 Year Lifestyle Second Edition in a PDF format. And then I did an interview with a neuroscientist, a PhD in neuroscience. Her name is Dr. Stephanie Sullivan. She's a, a PhD at, uh, and she works at uh, the head of research at Life University, and uh, they're doing amazing research there. And uh, in this interview, the, the title of this ebook is called Exciting Neuroscience Breakthroughs for All. We go through all the things that are related to neuroscience that you need to know, the body's ability to adapt. We just talked about that, the innate intelligence, the ability to adapt, and things that you can do to make yourself much more adaptable in a healthy way so you can yes. function at 100% for 100 years and beyond and raise your family that way. Right. So can you give us just maybe your top three or top five tips for how we can stay healthy? Uh, yes, absolutely. So the first one is, is develop a long term vision uh, and let go of immediate gratification, because what I find for people is we are so much living in the moment to moment to moment that if you develop a long term vision, it's easy to say yes to the things that are good for you, and it's easy to say no to the things that are bad for you. So develop that long-term vision. The question that is really the hook of the whole book is if you knew you'd live to 100, how would you change your life today? We're the first group in history getting the advance notice that we'll probably live longer than we ever thought. So nobody wants to spend the last 10 or 20 years of their life rotting away on a, on a feeding tube. Yeah. Uh, like my dad did, sadly, that's a topic for another day. Maybe we can revisit and how to prevent some of that. Yeah. So develop a long-term vision. The next thing is, is begin to trust your innate intelligence and make choices that you know deep down are good for you. Not that your husband says to do, not that your wife says to do, not even necessarily that your doctor tells you to do. Yes. That yeah. you trust your gut and begin to really trust your innate intelligence and listen to it. And then once you start to develop that trust, then watch yourself like you're watching a movie and catch yourself. We call it the midstream catch. So catch yourself when you're in the middle of one of those addictive behavioral things, mm -hmm. watch yourself like you're watching a movie and stop yourself in your tracks mm -hmm. and make a different choice. You know, I have been called by my colleagues, people in speaking. I've spoken to all kinds of groups, companies, organizations, doctors, groups all over the world. And, you know, when I talk about it, it's, it's interesting that, you know, when you realize that, hey, you're an expert, but we're telling people to trust their innate intelligence, they'll find the right doctor. But nobody can, there is no shortcut to change for you. There is no shortcut to change for you personally. You have your own habits. I'm not going to prescribe, you need broccoli, you need cauliflower. You know, people ask me, you know, what's the one thing if you want to live healthy to 100? Is it broccoli? Is it cauliflower? Is it CrossFit? No, it's different for everybody. Thank you. So Thank you for saying that. Yes. Yeah. So you watch yourself like you're watching a movie. If somebody tells you to take something and you get sick and then you take it a second time and you get sick, it's probably not for you and it may be right for them and it's not what your body needs. I mean, I have a certain style as a chiropractor. Um, there are different styles in chiropractic. People very incorrectly would say now because people are becoming much more holistic and they'll say, hey, you know, chiropractic first, drug second, surgery last. I disagree with that. I think it's chiropractic first, a certain style. And if it doesn't work, chiropractic a different style and then chiropractic or holistic something third, mm -hmm. different style before yeah. you turn to drugs and surgery so that you can work with your body's innate intelligence. So you watch with yourself like you're watching a movie. You make those changes on the fly. Those changes become a habit. And next thing you know, you are living your unique 100-year lifestyle. And then 
your talents start to come out. Your health radiates. You sleep better. You function better. Uh, you find the right chiropractor to be your family doctor. You find the right nutritional resource. You find the right whatever it is, wherever it is that you end up going to support your innate intelligence expressing its full potential for a lifetime. That's fantastic. And we, we did have one question before we go. I'd like to end there, but we, I don't want to skip over a question that somebody asked about, which was, um, you know, do you, you know, do you know of unvaccinated? I mean, you, you have like basically a case study with your family of an unvaccinated family that was very, very healthy. Do you know of unvaxxed versus vaxxed studies out there that um, could show that on a broader scale that there might be more evidence for a larger population that that could be beneficial? Uh, yes. And I don't have it right in front of me, so I can find that for you. And it is also in the film. So they talk about it in the last like few minutes of the film or the last five, 10 minutes of the film. They talk about that study because a lot of the film, they ask the question, you know, why don't we just do the common sense study? Why don't we just do the study and compare vaccinated versus unvaccinated kids? Mm -hmm. And I can tell you in my family with no visits to need for uh, visits for sicknesses and illnesses and things like that. No allergies, none of those types of things. Uh, and I know a lot of my colleagues, we talk about it. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story. My son, Jacob, when he went to everywhere he went because he was not vaccinated and people say, wow, you're not vaccinated. Oh my God, you're not vaccinated. Well, when he got to life, when he went to chiropractic school, the people that were learning and embracing this innate intelligence and understanding how to optimize it and their they say, well, so Jacob, so you're a Cairo kid, right? And Jacob said, yeah. And they said, were you vaccinated? He said, no. And they were like, really? Wow, cool. <laughs> so, you know, if you're in the wrong environment and you're getting attacked for the things that you know are good for you, trust your innate intelligence and change your environment. Lovely. I love that. And we have, we have that choice, right? We really do. I know people feel like we don't have a lot of choices right now. But in the end, we really do. It's your body. It's your choice. You can live where you want. You can, you know, put on a mask or not if you want. You And it really, you can vaccinate or not if you want. You, you can move or homeschool or do something else. In the end, we do have choice. And what we're inviting you to do is just look at all the different choices, right? Like it, Dr. Plasker is saying, if something's not working for you, try something else. Yeah, but I'm going to give you, I'm going to give like a asterisk next to your statement. Yeah. And I'm going to say, Right now you do. Yes, right now you do, yes. And we do need to work together very, like we really do, do need to work together across the nation to make sure that we educate our senators and representatives that are making the laws right now. And I think that as a health freedom movement in general, we really need to focus on this COVID-19 vaccine, the flaws, the rush, the process that's being rushed, the way, whether it's effective or not, and uh, I prefer we focus on that rather than the mask situation. I think that is people are collapsing the two of them. And it's really important to focus on this current vaccine that they're developing and rushing because we have an opportunity right now with all of the scrutiny on this vaccine to expose whether or not it's safe or not, whether or not it's effective or not, what type of testing has been done. And that will impact all the, the perspective on all of the other vaccines. So we really need to educate now our senators, our representatives. We need to question. And by the way, on MomsAcrossAmerica.org, we do have a campaign that's still up. I think over 18,000 people have already emailed the top 10 vaccine manufacturers, the, the Fauci, the FDA, the CDC, and the HHS, and ask them to test the COVID vaccine for glyphosate and not allow other toxins, you know, to really ensure safety testing for this vaccine. Now, I know most of the people watching here are probably not going to get the vaccine anyway, but we all know that our loved ones, our family members, people are going to be highly pressured, if not, you know, potentially mandated to get this vaccine in order to work or travel or whatever. And we are extremely concerned about that. So we really want everybody to go to momsacrossamerica.org, click on action, and we have a test the COVID vaccine action, and you can contact those um vaccine manufacturers and our health and regulatory agencies to to require that because we believe from previous testing that they will find glyphosate weed killer in all of those vaccines and yeah, that's simply not acceptable and i think that's an important strategy i love what you're doing i did fill that out i did sign it i did make a Thank donation you. to moms across america yes, so, so please you. do that everybody and i'll tell you nvic.org yes. uh, national vaccine information center barbara Lowe fisher 
She is a hero in my mind. Their team yes. over there has been doing work for a long time. They have this whole legislative uh, piece that is already in place for you to find your, uh, you know, and to communicate. They'll let you know in your state where you are when legislation is on the table that you need to know about. And so, uh, listen, everybody, we are at a time in history that everybody needs to be an activist. Everybody needs to be an activist. No victims here, no victims. And everybody needs to watch that film because it will equip you to be an expert in this conversation. And you won't even have to have the conversation if you just share the film, but then these conversations will change because it will be centered around truth. Great, and that film is 1986, The Act. We've been speaking with Dr. Eric Plasker, who is a 35 year practitioner of chiropractic care, training, uh, 20, in tw training other chiropractors for 20 years, an international author. His book is The 100 Year Lifestyle and today, uh, by going to their the website 100 year lifestyle you can get a free copy is that what you said of the of your book yep you'll get a free copy of the 100 year lifestyle second edition it's the most recent edition get the one with the sunset on it okay. uh there's there's two uh, on there not the one with the blue rays but the one with the sunset is the most recent edition okay so that's the one that you want to get and um and i think you'll love it it's changed so, so it over. looks like does it look like this one uh, nope, that's not it. Um, okay, that's I will, that, that's, uh, actually, I don't even know why that's up there. That was maybe the CD, but look for the okay. orange sunset. I'll show you here. Wait one second. Okay. This is what that it looks one. like. Okay, great. Yeah. So that, you know what to look for now. Please do get this book and people have questions. They want to be a chiropractor now that they've seen this. So they're going to have to contact you through the website to find out how they can get training done. I think my son's going to want to be a chiropractor if you're seeing this. Uh, we're so excited that you're sharing these just really valuable uh, tips for all of us. And I, I most love that you're urging us to trust ourselves and to try different things that work for us and, and to really step in and intervene with our bad habits. There are bad habits being developed right now. There are lines around the block for Krispy Kreme and Jack in the Box. It, yeah. and it is not the time to be inundating your system with sugar and carbs that can really weaken your immune system right now, folks, and glyphosate and toxic pesticides and all that. So we could talk all day, but yes, thank you, Lisa and Anne and Stephanie and everybody that was on safe with your questions. Please do share this interview with other people. Go to 100yearlifestyle.com, go to momsacrossamerica.org and get involved. Now's the time to be an activist for health. Thank you Yay. so much, everyone. Thank you, Zen. Take care. Bye-bye.